Hello and welcome back to another Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that you can interpolate between plot states in Oasis D3 plot and that the interpolated time syncs with the Oasis DHIS timeline tool? Today I'm going to show you how you can interpolate between plot states in a D3 plot model and also how you can match these up using the timeline tool with a linked DHIS session. So what you can see is I have the 100 chord model at the top here and I can animate it we can see that the animation is playing with a output of every two milliseconds. So if I step forward with the right and left arrows, you can see down here, we've got an output of every two milliseconds. We can go backwards as well. And this is also matched up with the timeline here. You can go and have a look at my video on the timeline as well, and that'll be linked below. And just a reminder, the timeline is turned on and off with the toggle box here when you're in the T-Hiss options. Okay, so I can play my animation here. And what I've got is a kinetic energy output for the engine assembly and also momentum output for the engine assembly. And if I wanted to say check this model or uh, understand it a bit better, then I might be interested at say the point where the kinetic energy falls to zero or correspondingly the momentum crosses the um, zero momentum line. So in th this case, I'm just going to press Z and zoom into the plot here and understand the bounds of this. So we can see this sort of dips down and approximates, approximately goes to zero here. So I'm going to um, just window that again a bit more. And now if I wanted to play the plot states, I can use the arrows to go forwards and backwards but notice how this jumps between 38 milliseconds and 40 milliseconds and so I can't actually see the status of the model in that time between. What I need to do is use the interpolation functionality. So to do this I go to the animation arrow here and then select interpolate and I'm presented with a window that gives me a start time, a finish time and an interval that I'll interpolate with. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the help menu here. And what it's essentially saying is that the data is interpolated linearly and um, between the plot states that we have. So you need to be mindful of that because a linear interpolation um, might not always give you something that's fully representative, particularly if you're interpolating um, quite a lot between very sparse data points. It's worth also saying that this tool is really useful if you have multiple models read in that say had a different output frequency of D3 plot results. And if you wanted to view them together, you could use the interpolation functionality to play the animations in sync rather than at different time states. Okay, so in this case, I'm just gonna look at this small window here from 0.038 to 0 0.40. So I'll just type that in. And now I need to give an interval here. So the default interval is just two milliseconds because that's the output that I requested. So let's say I want to have 20 interpolation states. So in this case, I would just go for 0 0.0001. So that's a tenth of a millisecond. And when I click done here, if I now play the animation, we'll see that it steps through that small range. And once it gets to the end, it will jump back to the beginning. Now, if I pause this by pressing space, note that my cursor needs to be over the D3 plot window because space over the THIS windows just refreshes the graphs. I can now see that my animation has stopped at the 0.039 second point. And if I just use the normal right and left arrows, what I'll see is it actually jumps forwards and backwards in the default plot states. So the way that you can jump through the interpolated states is by holding down shift and then using the arrows. And now we can see that we're jumping forwards and backwards. And so at this point, I could look at the very minimum here of the plot states. And if I zoomed in on the right hand side here, I can see that sure enough, that matches up with the point where it crosses the zero momentum line. So I kind of believe that because I would expect the momentum to be zero at the point where the kinetic energy is also um, zero. Um, and there's probably a reason why there's um, a little bit of kinetic energy here. So that'd be something I might want to investigate. 
um, but it's really cool that I can essentially interpolate the graphics um, so that I can view this state here and say that I want to ju just look at the engine. So I isolate that only. I could then animate that and see what's going on. And if I went to the D3Plot deform and magnify this by a little bit here, then I can see and understand a bit better what's going on with the engine, for example. So I hope you found that a really useful top tip that you can make use of when working with multiple models that are at different output frequencies or just to smooth an animation or as in the example I showed now where you've got a time history output and you want to understand what's going on with the model around a specific point in time. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you at the next Oasis Top Tips.